today's subject is going to be a kingfisher which i'm going to do on a light blue canson pastel paper what i try to do is use a paper that's going to form a part of the picture in other words the reason why i've chosen this blue is because i'm going to allow that paper to show through here and there where it's appropriate i'm using unison and schmincke pastels the very softest pastels are the ones that i prefer now i'm going to begin with the eye looking at the darker tones in the kingfisher and working towards the lighter tones and letting the paper show through where it is appropriate. So I'm going to use a black pastel pencil to begin with. The eye is very black. Now when you're working from a photograph, you'll normally find that the eyes will appear black. I think there is a little bit of colour in there, but I'm going to put in a dark blue and then a, a reflection of light. The only pieces of equipment I use really are a paper blender or torch on, a little bit of sandpaper to clean up the paper blender with when it gets dirty, and then of course a putty rubber and that's it. So really the equipment that you need for pastels is fairly basic. But I do find that the more expensive pastels, which are the soft ones, generally work better. I'm going to put a little dash of um, light blue in there to pick out, to pick out a reflection of light. Now, if I need to come back to that eye later I, to make any adjustments, I can do, but I can see that it's, it should be okay. Now, I'm going to look for other dark areas in the picture. I'm going to use the black pencil to outline this beak. An advantage you've got with pastels, whether they're pencils or whether they're the stick pastels, is, of course, light and heavy pressure is going to give you more or less on the picture. Now, what I'm going to do is use this black pencil very lightly so that, as I said earlier, the paper is going to show through because there is a hint of a blue shine on that beak. Of course, the lower part of the beak being in shadow is going to be darker, so I can press on quite hard just here. I'll put a little hint of very light blue over the top of that and that will work with the paper right now let's move along to the darker areas of the feathers i'm going to use a blue green right here A little bit of black is going to be required just to give a bit more form to the shape of the bird. I could go down into um, a, a, a pattern of water there underneath there, but for the sake of this um, exercise. I'm just going to stick to doing the bird. Let's get these other colours in place so I don't go over where these marks are. I'm using a red with a little bit of orange over the top of that. People always imagine you need hundreds and hundreds of different pastels. Well, you don't really, because when you're blending them together, you're producing more colours. And I could probably pick out in my box of hundreds of pastels, I could probably pick out about 30 that I use for just about everything, nearly. Getting a little bit of white. I think I'll use the um, I use a white schmincker because that is the very lightest, the very lightest white that you're going to come across. I think really practice is the thing with using stick pastels. A lot of people 
trying to get the pastel to touch a certain part of the paper and it goes wrong and so you end up with the people looking like this. Um, it's a good idea to use the straight edges for instance and you can get some very thin lines. Again, any marks that you make on the paper where you don't want them to be, get them out straight away and you're less likely to lean on them. Let's get some colour in here. Now I'm going to blend that up into that light, that lighter blue. Although fingers generally are better for blending pastel with, um, from time to time you need something with a little bit more control, with a little bit more of a point. So I'm going to use this blender to go along the edges of here and to refine the edge of the picture, to refine the edge of the bird rather. Now by using a paper that is the that you can use, you can incorporate into the actual subject, you're not putting on as much pastel as you might imagine. A good demonstration of that fact is on my website there is a picture of Bluebell Woods which is a very dark green picture and um, there's not as much pastel on it as you might imagine because all the dark green is Sennelia Lacarte pastel card. Now if I wanted to put water in here I would need to put very little pastel into the picture the paper would form the water. Now I'm going to go in with this very lightest blue. I think it's a French ultramarine, it isn't quite white. The way in which you can tell is if I make a mark on the paper, on the masking tape with it there, and then I put a true white next to it, you can see what colour it is. Sometimes you've got to do that to be able to ascertain whether something is a very light tone or whether it's actually white. There, are, there is this argument about using black and white. A lot of people believe that you shouldn't. I think it's quite acceptable as long as you don't become a slave to it and you do look for the colours that you're finding. Right, so let's get some more darker tones in here. Around the edges of these markings, I'm going to use a black pencil. Across the head there, Yeah, many people when they start to paint, um, when they take it up as a hobby, slot into watercolours. Um, and watercolours is very difficult. I think a lot of people would benefit by using pastels to begin with and then moving on to more difficult mediums afterwards. Right, we'll get a little bit of tone on this stump here. I tried to blend the earlier stages of the picture, what is essentially the underpainting, because there is this argument against blending. A lot of people think, believe, should I say, that you shouldn't do it. I tend to get the best of both worlds by blending in an initial underpainting and then going over the top with fresh pastel that isn't worked in, so you've got the, uh, the freshness and the vibrancy of it still there. Now, a white pencil is going to pick out a few more details on these feathers here. Because there's quite a lot of blue on the picture there, <coughs> that's going to inhibit this white, which is what I wanted to do. A little bit of pattern on this head. This isn't Morse code, by the way. A 
little bit more of a shine on these feathers here, I think, with a lightish blue. And just tap that in lightly, not to blend it in totally, but just to soften it a little bit. I think a little bit more orange in these um, feathers just behind the eye. Think of pastel as a wet medium. I know that might sound ridiculous as it's dry, but when you drag pastel across what is already on there, you're going to pick it up. So when I'm dragging this white over here, I'm going to pick up the blue. So this is where the uh, nice clean towel comes in handy because I've got to clean that off so that I don't drag that blue into there and contaminate it. Now, for the sake of the demonstration today, I think that's given you an insight into how to use the paper to form a part of the picture. I could do a lot more to this picture, but the idea is to show you where the blue is showing through and even the background I can create with that paper, an impression of water or sky even. Okay, so that's the demonstration for today.